Hi, it's me, Joan. Welcome to another edition of Reading with Joan. I am your host, Joan, and I love reading books. And I love reading intercontinental books. Books that are going to bring children back to the memories of their heritage. Right here in Scotland. If you want me, join me. If you want to join me every Tuesday and Thursday, 4 p.m. And on Saturday on our Facebook page, later on on YouTube, where we'll discuss about different topics that relate to us. I hope you enjoy today's reading and I hope you have fun as you read with us every time on this program. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to our channel. Most importantly, tell somebody else about us. Hope to see you soon. It's me, Joan. Bye. Thank you. Hi guys. Today we're reading about a scientist called Dr. Geoff Godfrey Palmer. Professor Godfrey Henry Oliver Palmer was born in St. Elizabeth, Jamaica in 1940. He grew up in Kingston, Old Man Town. He loved soccer and cricket, and he developed the latter to a very competent level on the race course field. Now it's called National Heroes Park. This love of cricket was to elevate him and prove a foundation and a ticket in his later years. In Jamaica, he played for the Kingston Senior School cricket team. Just short of his 15th birthday, in 1955, Godfrey's mother, who had travelled to London, England, a few years before, sent for him. When he arrived in London, his mother looked for work for him to replace the £80 she spent for his aeroplane ticket. But because of his age, it was illegal for him to work full time, so he had to attend school. At Shelburne Road Secondary Modern at Nags Head, Holloway, Newly arrived Palmer was given a customary IQ test and due to the language and cultural differences he was classified as educationally subnormal. ESN. He also discovered that he was the only black person in the school. Have you ever experienced that sort of thing before? His athleticism, especially in cricket, soon saw him selected as the only boy ever from a secondary modern school to play for London School Boys Cricket Team. The Islington Gazette even published a picture of him. This, in turn, led to a requested transfer from the headmaster of Highbury County Grammar School, where he was placed in the education of Slow Street. Once again, despite this, Palmer left school three years later with three O-levels and one A-level. In 1958, he applied and gained employment as a junior lab technician at Queen Elizabeth College, London, working for Professor Garth Chapman after seeing an advert in the papers. Between 1958 and 1961, Palmer obtained two further A-levels and had a full grant awarded, but again, acceptance at university proved real difficult. By this time, he had attained a total of four A-levels and eight O-levels. That's a lot. Professor Chapman, however, managed to get Palmer admitted at Leicester University in 1961. And by 1964, Palmer had his degree in botany. That's the study of plants. After his studies and um, back in London, Palmer found that the job market was not so welcoming, even with his qualifications. So, he got a job as a potato peeler to try and make ends meet. Today he jokes about this, as the only job he could get close to his degree in botany. That's funny. Although Palmer was turned down to study a master's degree, he was accepted to study for a joint doctorate degree in grain science and technology at Harriet Watt College and Edinburgh University. He began his doctorate in 1965, and finished it in fewer than three years. In 1968, he began research work at the Brewing Research Foundation in Surrey as a green scientist, 
specializing in barley and introducing the abrasion process, which revolutionized the international brewing industry. In 1977, he left his position as a senior scientist and returned to Scotland to work as a lecturer at Harriet Watt College. He helped graduate students from all over the world in grey technology until his retirement. His awards are numerous and Palmer became one of, if not the foremost, grain specialist in the world. That means he was a really, really good scientist. Palmer somehow also found time to help members of his community with reading and writing skills, plus a little advocacy as well. He is still involved similarly after his retirement. Summary. Dr. Palmer's career is exemplary in focus and ten tenacity, tenacity against all adversity, despite hurdles strewn along his educational path, including racist discrimination and prejudice as demeaning work for one so highly qualified. He forged on and achieved his goal to such high levels that he stands as a beacon to all races. His achievements received the highest awards and recognitions, including the 1998 American Society of Brewing Chemist Award. He is the first European science recipient and fourth ever at the time. The 2002 William Darling Good Citizens Award, Community Race Relations. He got an OBE in 2003 and in 2004 was a Black Enterprise UK champion and he had the Dreaming of Midlothian, an award he shares with such greats as Nelson Mandela in 2011. Emeritus Professor Geoff Calmer still found time to champion race relations and mentor young African Caribbean children in maneuvering the education system in the UK. As we prepare to publish, we learned that Professor Geoff Palmer has just been nominated onto the 2014 Queen's New Year's Honours List to receive a Knight Bachelor Award for services to science, human rights and charity. So that means he would be known as Sir Geoff Palmer. On this, in an interview in the London Jamaican Times of January 2014, Professor Palmer says, I'm quite happy that the award is partly for the work in my professional life. Because many times, when members of our community are recognised, it is for community work. And while that is great, I am happy to be recognised for the work that I did. That has made a difference internationally. Internationally. A rise Professor Emeritus Sir Geoff Palmer. On education, in the same interview, he states, I realise that we can go nowhere without education. We all need to work to get better educational opportunities for our young people who are deprived. Education gives you the opportunity to become more mobile. Without education, you're stuck. Education gives you choices. On parents, Palmer says, I am saying to the kids today, don't underestimate your parents. If they're doing the best for you, do the best for them. Sometimes you may feel that it is not enough, but be aware that sometimes they are giving all that they have got and that should be enough. And here's a picture of Professor Palmer here. Wow, I learned a lot from today's hero. But one of the most important things I learned is that even if you're underestimated, push on. It's fine. You can still prove yourself and even if they don't listen to you, you know inside your heart that you can achieve more than they think you can. You know, one time I met Sir Geoff Palmer when my mum had written her first book, She Smiled. He came to her book launch. I learned a lot from this amazing man. That was a really life-changing experience. He's really challenging me to not underestimate myself the way others see me. He really challenged me to believe in myself and not believe in the way other people see me, especially when they underestimate me. I hope to be like Sir Geoff Palmer and to leap a landmark just like him and to encourage others and to help them too. 
Thank you, Sergio Palmer, for being an inspiration to my generation. Thank you for watching. Bye. Hi, kids. The last time we were reading a story, can you remember the title? Mm, you can't. Let me help you. We're reading from this book, Why, Why Leopard Has Spot. And the title of the story we're reading was Spider Flies to the Feast. Let's find out what happened. Remember we were reading about the spider and how he was playing tricks on the dog and how his trick got him into trouble. We're going to find out today what eventually happened to him. Let's dig into the story. Spider had the great spirit. That's not fair, he thought. Why shouldn't I go too? I'm better than those birds. I have eight legs. Birds only have two. He waved his leg proudly. No one was watching. Spider squinted up into the sky. I know, he said. I will make my own wings and fly to the feast myself. Spider pranked over Quill's nest. Do you have some extra feathers around? You can have the ones over there in the grass, she said. Thank you, said Spider. Then he said to the eagle, can I borrow some feathers? Take the ones on the ground below my nest, she said. Spider asked the vulture, woodpecker, blue heron for feathers. He got big, strong feathers. Then he asked pepper bird, parrot, and the homing bird. They got small fluffy feathers. He got feathers from every kind of bird. Soon he had a huge pile of feathers. Long and short, wide and thin, and all the colors of a rainbow. He arranged them on the ground in the shape of a coat with wings. Now I need some glue, Spider thought. With a sharp rock, he strapped the back of a rubber tree until sticky white glue scraped out. He spread them on the feathers. When the glue was dry, he put on his new coat and flapped his wings. His wings fluttered back and forth. After bumping along on the ground for a few seconds, he took off into the wing hair. At first, he wobbled shakily from side to side, but soon he began to soar smoothly. His wing lifted him higher and higher. I'm flying, she shouted. Wait until the birds see this. The next day, the birds were up early. They started flying to the feast. Spider woke up late. She, he poked his head out of the door and saw them high in the sky. Hey, wait for me! He called, but no one's heard him. Spider hurried into his wing coat and took off after them. Here I come! He cried. All morning, Spider flew. He followed the birds into the sky. His legs ache. His head hurt. He was hungry. Finally, he arrived at the feast. The great spirit was talking. Welcome. <coughs> Excuse me. Welcome. I hope you all enjoyed the feast I prepared for you today, he said. Spider settled into the corner and I, the food, spread out on the table. The birds were listening carefully to the great spirit. None of them noticed him. This is the first time you have all been together. So, before you eat, I would like to introduce your I would like to introduce yourself to one another. Eagle peeled our feathers. My name is Eagle. Parrot creep. My name is Parrot. Hummingbird hovered near the Great Spirit and announced, "I am Hummingbird." The Great Spirit smiled and held out a hand. Hummingbird alighted on the open palm and folded his her wings. After all, the birds had introduced themselves 
The great spirit pointed to Spider. I see we have a guest, she said. What is your name? Oh no, Spider thought. I wasn't expecting this. If I say Spider, the birds will throw me out. He, sta he, scattered, he staggered on his feet and shook his wings and gave himself some few moments to think. I have feathers from all the birds, so I know what I'll say. My name is all of you, said Spider. The great spirit nodded. Now that the introdu introductions are finished, she said, it's time to eat. The homing bear filtered over the bride's red biscuit. Parrot, parrot cracked some sunflower seed. Pepper bird put a sweet pepper off the vine. Wait, shouted Spider. The bird froze. Great spirit asked Spider, who is this feast for? The great spirit leaned forward. This feast is for all of you, she said. Whoa, Spider said, spreading her wings and pushing the birds aside. He flapped up upon the table and shouted, The feast is just for me, cause my name is all of you. You can't eat any of my food. He scratched the flower from the hummingbird and gobbled up the parrot seed and groveled the bird, the pepper into his mouth. The bird shrinked and hoofed and hoofed, but Spider was fast. In a flash, all the food was gone. Spider had eaten up every beet by all by himself. The great spirit saw the birds were hungry, and Spider would be sorry, she thought. When it was time for them to leave, Spider turned to Hummingbird and said, Those little feathers of all of you look a lot like yours. Yes! They are mine, Hummingbird said, and those long feathers on his wings look like yours. All of you must really be Spider. Whoops, said Spider. I think I heard my name. I better go now. Spider took off for home. Eagle soared after him and said, Spider, you tricked us. I want my feather back. Oh, sure, said Spider. I have plenty more. He took off Eagle's feather and gave them to her. Next, Pepper Bird glided over and took his feathers. Then, Goose. Then, Turkey. Then, Parrot. After all, all the birds came. One by one, they took their feathers from Spider. Spider flapped his leg and couldn't go up. He began to fall. He can't slow down he realized what am i going to do now just then homing bird flew by help me little bird spider said hurry down to earth tell my family to cover the ground with soft leaves but homing bird remembered what the spider had done she was hungry she knew her friends were too she sprayed down to the earth and called spider's family Spider has a new trick he wants to show you. Bring the tawny branches and stick them to the ground with the pointed with the pointed with point straight up. Spider will stop just above them. Spider's family were used to his trick. They did exactly as Hummingbird said. Spider fell through the cloud. He heard everyone clapping and cheering. Hey, Spider! Come on, Spider! Show us your new trick! What's wrong with you, Spider yelled. Where are the soft leaves? Why are they sharp brown? Oops! Poor Spider laid on the thorns. He could hardly move. The only thing that saved his life was the hard glue from the bird's feathers coat. All his legs were broken. And that was why the spider's legs are crooked. Spider still loves to fly, but he never tried to make wings. Now he has to wait for the wind so he can sail through the air on his silky kit. Did you like that story? Did you learn anything? I think I learned something important. Don't trick people. 
You can keep playing tricks today, but one day it will put you into trouble. The dog warned the spider, but she wouldn't listen to her friend, and she ended up losing and breaking all her legs. Now I understand why the spider's leg is broken, and I guess you learned a lesson or two from this story. I did. Uh, next time, we'll start a new book. I really enjoyed all the stories here. They taught us a lot of life's lessons. And until I see you next time on Reading with John, bye.